Okay, so we're introducing a new function known as the modulus function. The modulus function, effectively from its very simplest origins, would look like this. Okay, two vertical straight lines. Okay, around the function. Y equals mod x, as uh, your teacher might use, and I certainly do. Um, otherwise known as the value function. So on a calculator, especially the graphical calculator, uh, you will find it as being the absolute value, abs of x. Okay? Meaning the same thing. This is used um, in geometry um, and vectors to represent the length. So what this does is it effectively gets rid of a negative sign. Um, you can't have a negative length, uh, so the modulus removes that negative from the equation, effectively. So what this says is that the mod of a number like 2 would just be 2, because... Um, well, it's a function that makes all entries, all uh, numbers that are coming in, all the real numbers, positive. Okay, so 2 was positive to start off with, and so it is still positive. However, if you, you did the mod of minus 3, well, that would be 3. Okay, we can't have a negative length, so that's just 3. So what this does effectively is that if you built up um, a table of values, let's say from minus 2 to 2, and y was mod x, well, the modulus of minus 2 is 2, the modulus of minus 1 is 1, the modulus of 0 is 0, the modulus of 1 is 1, the modulus of 2 is 2. So if you then plotted this curve, effectively, so there's no curvy bits, but it would look like this. Okay, there's 0, 0, there's 1, 1, 2, 2, minus 1, 1, minus 2, 2. Okay, so it's this strange looking V shape. You'll notice how it doesn't go below the x axis in this case. So this is the most um, basic of modulus function, okay? So if you then looked at, say, y equals, um, let's choose x plus 1, x minus 1. Now this, we know, is a parabola crossing at minus 1 and 1 on the x-axis. So it would look something like this. Well, that's not very good. Well, that's pretty much exactly the same as I drew beforehand. But it'll have to do. It'll do. Okay? So it's going through minus 1 and 1 on the x-axis. Now, because if we put modulus signs around it, okay, and at, we look at the absolute value, then all of the x values that I put in have to end up as positive. So what happens is that we get the same curve there and there, but here we have values that ended up as negative because they're below the x-axis. These parts get reflected up. So you end up with this strange bouncy curve, okay? And that is what is happening from this modulus sign around the function. Anything that is below the x-axis gets reflected up. So another example of this would be uh, y equals mod of sine x, for example. So modulus of the trig function sine. Now sine normally looks like this. Okay. So mod of sine, anything that is below the x-axis gets reflected up. So mod of sine 
would look like this, bouncing along the x-axis. Okay, so this is what the modular signer around the whole function does. Of course, if we then right, take 1 away, then yes, we can translate the curve downwards, and it would be below the x-axis. But when the modular sign is all the way around the function, then it can only be positive. So let's say I was asked to sketch this thing. y equals mod of x minus 3 minus 6. And let's say also that I want to figure out exactly where it crosses the x and y axis. Now you could obviously plug this straight into a graphical calculator to help you. Okay? And if you did that, what you would find is something that looks like this. Okay, there's x, there's y, and there's some interesting points here. This is where it crosses the x-axis that I want to know, that's where it crosses the y-axis, and it would be very interesting also to find that point as well. Now, let's see if we can locate this point first. Fair enough. If you looked at it on a graphical calculator, you would be able to tell that this is 3 along and 6 down. So at 3 minus 6. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at this and say, well, actually, this is actually very similar to something else we've seen, completed square form of a parabola um, that has its vertex at 3 minus 6. This is almost looking like a parabola, although it does have just straight lines, and its vertex is at 3 minus 6. It's under the same rules. Okay, It's got the same rules to it. So, thinking of this, we can find the vertex of our graph, 3 minus 6. We then want to find out where it crosses the y-axis. Now, that's when x is 0. So, when x is 0, y is equal to 0 take away 3 take away 6. Now, the modulus of minus 3 is just 3. So we get 3 take away 6, which is equal to minus 3. And we also want to find out where it crosses the x-axis. Well, that's when y is 0. So when y is 0, 0 is equal to mod of x minus 3 take away 6. So if we add 6 to both sides, we get to this equation. Now, we haven't met an equation with a modulus sign in it in order to solve it. We can see that there are going to be two solutions, and there are a couple of methods that you could try. One will work for all and will be nice for some, and one will work for all and be nice for most. Okay, So the one that is m nice for some, which is one that I wouldn't really recommend that often, is if you square both sides, that gets rid of the problem of the negative value inside here. Okay, Because this could be negative, and we need to work out both positive and negative answers. So if you square both sides, and then square root, then x is 3 plus or minus 6. So we're at 9 or minus 3. Okay? This is the method that I would only recommend in some circumstances. So here it worked nicely. For that previous example of um, the modulus of x minus 1, x plus 1, 
is equal to 6, for example, if you square both sides, you're going to end up with having to solve a quartic, which would be horrific. Okay, so don't do that method for that one. Okay, so that's why in some cases it will be nice, some cases it won't. Another method that I would recommend over that one is to say, well, okay, well, I know that x minus 3 has either got to be minus 6, because I know that minus, mod of minus 6 is 6, or the mod of 6 is 6. So, or x minus 3 is 6. So solving these two equations, we get x is equal to minus 3, or x is equal to 9, which is what we found beforehand. Okay? And that's the nice way. And that's the way that I would suggest you work with these problems. Okay? So that is uh, an introduction to the modulus function, um, and more videos uh, with more problems will be coming after.